This is the first in a video series where we'll make a ray tracer. I'm just some sophomore in college, so I have no idea what I'm doing, but my hope in making a video series is to both get support in my goals and to document my process so others can follow and understand it. We're also going to have a little fun, especially when I get better at video editing. My long-term goal with this project is to create and render a short film, which there is no way I can do completely alone. That said, let's begin. While I create this solution, let's talk about the tools being used for this project. I'm going to simultaneously write this in two different ways. Once using Compute Sharp, the black magic fuckery jumped up by the definitely part machine, maybe part human thing that is Sergio Petri. Then we'll rip the condom off and draw a dog it with DirectX 12 and custom HLSLs. This is the digital equivalent of walking 20 miles to school uphill both ways, but it builds character. Now that the basic project layout is done, we'll talk about the components that we'll need here. First, we have a camera. The camera sits at an origin, where the rays will come from. Then our camera has a target. This is a point the camera looks at. This is a convenient way of representing the direction of the camera, but it doesn't allow camera rolling rotation, so we might change it later. Next it has a field of view. This is the distance from the projected view to the camera origin. This is also known as the lens angle. We'll talk more about this when we begin casting rays. Here's an animation of a ray being cast from the camera and bouncing off. Sorry, this is boring as shit. Let's rephrase it. First, we have a camera. The camera sits at an origin where the rays will come from. Then our camera has a target. This is a point the camera is looking at. This is a convenient way of representing the direction of the camera, but a camera can't do a barrel roll like this, so we're going to have to fix that someday. Next it has a field of view, which we're just going to procrastinate. Anyway, here's a ray being cast. And now it's seeding code. There's definitely a middle ground to nail here. This code is two 3D vectors, one for the origin and one for the target. As buttfuck simple as this code is, it can't run on the GPU because the class is a reference type. We'll need to rewrite this as a struct to run on the GPU. We'll start by creating a new project for our explicitly ray tracing code. As I rewrite the camera, you might notice that I wrote a static method called create instead of a constructor. This is because Compute Sharp is too smooth brain for constructors. Put in some comments for when I forget linear algebra and we're done. For now. Before we continue, let's talk about how rays are cast. For each pixel, a camera will emit a single ray per sample. For now, we're only doing single sample rendering, so one ray per pixel. Let's take a look at rendering a 3x2 image with this camera. Before creating our ray, we need to derive some shit for later. First of all, we're going to find the viewport height, then the viewport width using the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is our image width divided by our image height, in this case 3 divided by 2. Now we'll apply the field of view, which is some boring shit. The viewport height, as if the field of view were 90 degrees, is our basis for scale. The center of the image to the top of the image makes 1. We're going top to bottom though, so we'll just make the height 2. Then, to account for the field of view, we'll multiply that by the tangent of the field of view divided by 2. Just to confirm, 90 divided by 2 makes 45. Tangent of 45 makes 1, so that checks out. And we're done with the field of view. Fuck that. Now, to find the viewport width, multiply the viewport height by the aspect ratio. Then let's find the camera direction by taking the origin and subtracting the target. We'll also normalize our direction and call it W. Next, we'll define up in global space as the y-axis. Because this is assumed and not a parameter, the camera cannot do a barrel roll. We'll have to live with this for now. Then we can take the cross product of the y-axis and w to get the horizontal tangent vector, which has a curved ball will go fuck off in that direction. We'll call this u. Cross product of w and u will give us the vertical tangent vector v. Let's do a quick vibe check on u, v, and w. As you can see, u, w, and v live in their own little world 10 degrees off from the global x, y, z. Hey, vibin'. Now if we multiply u by the viewport width, we get a 3D vector representation of the camera width. We'll call this the horizontal component. Then we get another 3D vector component from the viewport height and v. Finally, we can find the position from the bottom left corner by taking the origin and subtracting w, half the vertical component and half the horizontal component. Now we can finally create some rays. Rays will have an origin and a direction. Each ray will be generated based on the fraction of the image they cover as a float from 0 to 1. The bottom left corner is 0-0, zero, zero. the center is half-half, and the top right corner is 1-1. One, one. These positions are called U for the horizontal fraction and V for the vertical fraction. The origin of the ray is the camera origin. The direction of the ray is the bottom left corner plus U times the horizontal component plus V times the vertical component minus the camera origin. First, we'll create a ray struct containing an origin and direction. Again, you'll notice the create methods in place of constructors. This time, I'll also point out the public fields in place of properties, as you would usually use in C-sharp. This is again from Compute Sharp's status as a lobotomy victim. 
Now we'll create a full camera object. The full camera is separate from the camera because we will make the full camera on the GPU using the raw camera. So we need a GPU accessible version of the raw camera. The full camera also has the additional context to the aspect ratio, which the raw camera is independent of. In the full camera create method, we calculate the bottom left corner and the horizontal and vertical components to store on the object. The normalized method is provided, but if I had to guess, it just divides the vector by its length. No, wait, never mind. We, we can check. Let's, uh, uh, cool. We'll also make a method that creates arrays. This method takes the U and V pixel positions and has the camera create array for that position. Since Compute Sharp can't handle instance methods, we'll have this method take a full camera as its first argument. We'll even call that argument at this. Cheeky. Now that we're creating rays, let's make our first thing for them to collide with. The sky. When a ray doesn't hit any objects in the scene, it hits the sky. Collision with the sky behaves as if the sky were infinitely far away. As a result, ray origin becomes entirely irrelevant and we can find the sky collision point exclusively with the ray direction. Because... calculus. In the future, we'll have far more options for the sky, but for now we're going to create a linear gradient from negative 1y to positive 1y, where negative 1y is a specified color we'll call the albedo, and positive 1y is white. Now we'll quickly create a sky class containing the albedo. And again for the GPU. But wait, how the fuck does a full vector represent color? I'll explain. This is an RGB cube. It is a representation of color between three dimensions. This shows three of four channels we will use for color, red, green, and blue. The primary colors of additive color space. These make up three of the eight corners of the cube. Three more are yellow, magenta, and cyan, the secondary colors of additive color space. Finally, we have black for no color and white for all colors. Our fourth channel is opacity. With this knowledge, we can start calculating sky heads. First, we'll normalize the direction, giving us the range negative one to one, but we need zero to one. Therefore, we add one to multiply by 0.5. This maps our range linearly to zero through one. Then we take the position and multiply by the albedo and add the inverse of the position times white to get our color. This will make a gradient on the y direction of the ray. And that's a wrap on our most basic components for the day. Now I've just got to hook this all up with a path tracer and the display. We're going to very quickly create the AI render. This exists just to tell the render viewer a class can be used to render some shit. This does almost nothing right now, so I'll just skip over it. Now we'll create our scene object, which just contains the camera and sky. In our path tracer, we'll quickly cast a ray for each pixel, then hit the sky. This is where we really see Compute Sharp in it. The auto constructor attribute is provided by Compute Sharp, and we'll create a constructor for the shader with all its fields. It's just convenient. The struct implements iComputeShader, which specifies Compute Sharp to compile as an HLSL compute shader. As an HLSL, the execute method will run in parallel. Using the thread IDs, you can grab the position of an execution instance. Now we'll take that position, then cast array, and write to the buffer accordingly. It's a little inefficient to calculate the full camera on each thread, but we'll just leave it for now. Now we'll make the HLSL ray trace render, which will just be an implementation of our iRenderer for ray tracing and compute sharp with HLSLs. Well now we'll write directly to the buffer we're provided, but this isn't wonderful practice, so we'll modify this later. All right, final step before we've got something to show for our work, the render viewer. The render viewer will implement the iShader runner for compute sharp.winui. This marks a wrapper for a shader to run in the compute shader panel. The compute shader panel will do all the hard shit for me. It writes my pixel to the display and thank God I have no clue how it works. So this just wraps our iRender in a class that the compute shader panel can use. We'll just pass it a render and have it render the scene on execute. Quickly throw a compute shader panel in the XML and we're done, except some finishing touches. First off, I forgot to mark the path trace shader as partial. Whoops. Turns out naming our arguments this was too cool for compute sharp, so we'll have to rename those. Remember to bind the render view to the compute shader panel. Actually give the scene a camera and sky. And finally... Yep. But seriously, here we have a gradient from albedo to white exactly as we discussed. Next time we'll either start putting objects in the scene, or rewrite this for DirectX. Thanks for watching. If you want to see my code, you can find it on GitHub, preserved as is in a branch. Link in the description. Hopefully the quality of this video wasn't too bad. If this takes off, I'll go get myself a better mic. I'm currently using the mic for my service headphones with RTX audio and a GTX card, so there's room for improvement. In my videos, my goal is almost entirely to entertain while also getting some knowledge across. However, before I make my final edits, I make a strictly informative version where I get every concept across in full, no distractions. This version is uploaded unlisted but can be found in a playlist on my currently very empty channel. And before calling this done, I'm going to quickly give some thanks to my sources. Ray Tracing in One Weekend by Peter Shirley was a massive contribution to my understanding of this content. 
Currently, a lot of the code will look very similar, but that will change pretty significantly once we get more into the GPU operations. I'd also like to thank Sergio Pedri, the developer of Compute Shark. His library is making this so much easier, and he's been wonderful at responding to my questions about it. I worked with him on various stuff in the past as well, and he's just a great guy. On that note, see you in the next video.